<laughs> I almost daydreamed the, the time away. <laughs> I, I was sitting here waiting and uh, anyway, good morning. <laughs> I didn't miss the 555. It's still up there. Uh, don't, yeah, it hasn't been there too long, I guess. Anyway, the title for today is What a Difference a Day Makes. The day before yesterday, when I woke up with feelings of gratitude, as I shared in yesterday's video, that attitude carried me throughout the day. It was an awesome natural high. Yesterday, following the event from the night before, was an entirely different energy for me. I was questioning many things. In fact, I still am. That's how it often is with me, like a roller coaster. Some people don't like that. They more or less want to level out emotionally. I'm used to the tides of change, though, realizing that the tide comes in, then goes back out. This is the rhythm of life. While to flatline, our emotional state could be equivalent to the flatline on an EKG. Death. As I see it, I may as well embrace the drama despite the fact that feelings of uncertainty rise during these times of introspection. I'd rather be alive than dead. <laughs> For those of you that don't know what an EKG is, it's an electrocardiogram where they hook wires up to your body and measure your heart rate, basically, and other vital functions. And the normal, what's, what's expected of a living human being is for the <laughs> for the graph to go like this you know ding, 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 ding. when it goes like this then they do a code blue I think it's called in the hospital it means the patient has the spirit of the patient has left the body or the patient expired or died the medical profession especially the psycho psychiatric profession gives people drugs so that they can flatline their emotions. You know, manic depressives where you are high and then low and then high and then low. Well, they want to level that out so that there's no high and no low. You just sort of dwell in the, in the middle land where you don't feel much of anything at all. <laughs> and, and that's supposed to be a good thing. I wouldn't want a life like that. It's just my opinion. I mean, if you are taking those kind of drugs to level out your emotional state, okay, that's your choice. You're obviously not dead, even if you are flatlining it as much as possible. I don't choose to take drugs of any kind to, to create unnatural highs. Um, and I tend to deal with my emotions, whatever they are. And indeed, the night before last, when that lady came on to me, now bear in mind, I have more or less committed to myself to be a little more flexible in regard to uh, my sexuality, for one thing, and in regard to uh, opportunities that I have when, when people come into my life uh, wanting love, I wanted to be open to that. And in fact, that was part of the prayer that I had when I went to hear my son play that night. And so when this lady presented herself, I was thinking to myself, wow, this is, this is like the universe saying, okay, well, here's, a, here's an opportunity for you to examine this new frequency of thought that you're dealing with of being more open. And early on when she started inviting me to her table and, and stuff like that, I was um, quite observant and interested in, in what might happen until, as I said in the video from yesterday, until she t started talking about integrity and telling the truth, which my gut said she's not telling the truth now. She's, there's something else going on here. So the introspection to a large extent was triggered by, by the shift that occurred between driving to hear my son play that night, encountering this lady, 
and then seeing the shift in energy at, at how I perceived her and what was happening over the course of that evening. And as I said in yesterday's video, when my gut feeling tightened up and said something isn't right here, it was sort of like my inner barometer warning me that, uh, that there might be danger involved. And then having first one lady, and I didn't say this in yesterday's video, but uh, between the, the second to the last and the last set of the evening of the musical sets, uh, the lady that had warned me left. And another lady came in at the same time, who was also a friend of my son's. Both of them were actually friends of my son's that knew me. And uh, In any case, the second lady, early on in the, th in the final set, also gave me a warning about this other lady that she had observed during this uh, little bit of a space in between the, in the, break, the break area you know, because she observed the other lady leaving, but they didn't really talk with each other. And anyway, I got actually two warnings to watch out. And I also gave a warning to my son uh, not to take this lady home because there was something wrong. But, but what I'm saying is this put me into a, a space of introspection and also introspection of conversations that I have had with with others in my life and in my world, where I started yesterday re-examining everything, re-examining my relationship with my wonderful lady friend. You know, you know, where where do I want that to go? How do I want to handle this very different kind of a relationship that I've never had before? How do I want to handle the the opportunities that are being presented with the and by through the ambassador and through the red dragon? How do I want to handle all this stuff that's coming into my life? And so it was a time of, of really deep introspection yesterday. And that, as I said, is still going on here this morning. I almost didn't even know what I was going to talk about because nothing, nothing stood out as being emotionally charged for me. And I like the emotional charges, whether they're highs or lows. I like the emotional charges. And, and I'm sort of in a neutral place today. I, I can't say it's completely flatlined, but there's not a lot of up and down. It's 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 only just very gradual up and downs, depending on the flow of thought, which is also a flow of energy that's passing through my mind and being, my consciousness, if you will. And I want to encourage you not to try to escape these times of introspection. Because these are times where you're evaluating, or at least for me, where I'm evaluating my choices. Looking at them again, taking another look and saying, what exactly do I want in my life? What exactly am I wanting to create? It's really important, I believe, to know what we want to create, to know what we're looking for. And what I'm looking for, and have been looking for for a long time, is a relationship or relationships and opportunities to make the world better and, and to increase my own sense of joy and my own sense of gratitude and to, and to live with more of the highs and less of the lows, but not to eliminate the lows altogether. Because those times of lower energy, as I said, are times when we re reevaluate where we are and where we're going. It gives us a chance to sort of take a step back and become the observer instead of getting caught up in, in all of the excitement of the game that's happening. And it is a game. It is a dance. And it is exciting at times to be part of that dance. But it's also important to see where the, the drama is taking you and to, and to look at what the possibilities might be. And does it really meet my needs? Does it really... Does it really fulfill my mission? Does it really move me closer to what my dream is, my goal is, to create a world that works for everybody, including me? I'm not leaving myself out, but neither do I I want to get there and leave everybody else behind and not able to achieve theirs. I want the whole world to experience this, this 
master renaissance that, uh, that I've seen, this golden age of celebration, of dancing in the street where we finally get the monkey off of our back and, and get the beast out of our lives so that we can live a more natural life based on truth and based on compassion and based on the, the things that we value most in life. The, the joy of, of, of making love, the joy of family, the joy of experiencing things with friends and, and those that we care about. Now, I went to a party yesterday afternoon and it was, it was nice. I, I was actually on the fence whether I wanted to go or not because of certain things that had happened prior to going. I wasn't sure that I wanted to be there, uh, but something said, "Well, go ahead anyway, Ron." And I did, and I had a, I had some, I had a few actually uh, nice conversations with friends. Uh, one of them that lasted most of the party, but the big surprise was the the host and hostess that threw the party, and this was their fifth annual love fest, announced uh, a couple hours into the party. I didn't get there till about two hours after it started. It started at one and I left uh, around six and uh, I got there at around three and about three or three thirty uh, my friends announced that they were going to have a wedding ceremony that they had already taken out their marriage license and it was a surprise wedding that we all got to participate in. It was really nice despite the fact that thunder Clouds were overhead and lightning and, and at times very strong downpour of rain, which held up until just after the ceremony uh, happened, thank God, because it was outside uh, under the trees. And so not very long after the, they were pronounced man and wife, then the, the rain let loose and started coming down in buckets and everybody retreated either inside or under coverings outside. So it was quite quite a day, and the introspection when I went home. I mean, I had intended to to uh, connect with a friend in California, and there was some mix up there, and it didn't happen the way that I thought it was going to happen. And then I had another fairly long talk with a friend uh, after that, and I stayed up until after midnight. And she didn't go to bed till twelve thirty, as I was just in this place of introspection. I encourage you to take these times to look at things, to talk with your friends, to, to ask, where am I going? What am I doing? What are my values? What do I want? It's important to define those for yourself, for each of us to define what we want. Because if we're going to create a world that works for everybody, we need to be as much as possible on the same frequency with those that we're creating it with, especially if we're using life force or sexual energy in combination with our spiritual vision to do the co-creation. It's really important that those are aligned and in sync with each other. Otherwise, I, I, my feeling is that we are sabotaging what we're trying to create. Because if one person is trying to create one thing and another person is trying to create something else, you can see where that might cancel it, cancel it out so that neither of you get exactly what you're looking for. And I want to I want to move beyond the conspiracy of the world into the celebration of life. It's hard to celebrate life when we live in a world that is so controlled by um, by those that want to dominate us, those that want us to to make decisions for death. And that's what the psychiatric industry does by trying to level out the emotions. They don't want the emotional ups and downs. They want to level everything out. They want to keep everything the same and homogenize life. Well, that's not nature. That's not the way, that's not the way life is. Life is supposed to be more exciting at some times than it is at other times. That's just, it's just common sense. It's natural. To level out is not natural. That's the, the subhuman or the, uh, or the anti-personal movement the transpersonal movement, well, not, not trans, I like transpersonal, going beyond the personal and, 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 and delving into the archetypes and, and recognizing that we're playing roles and that's part of the drama. Roles are part of a play. You play roles when, you, when, you're, in a, when you're in a drama and we all play roles. 
and I like that. But to dehumanize us, which is what the the establishment, the elite, want to do. They want to dehumanize everything because they themselves have been dehumanized. And we, we need to get above that energy and actually to heal that energy that is in us. And we don't even recognize it unless we're willing to go into the to the down times, to the troughs in our in our wave experience, that the, the the low points, the ebbs. And then we come back into the flow. And then we start to ebb again. Again, the tide comes in, the tide goes out. All based on the rhythms of life. Don't try to squash those rhythms of life for yourself. Appreciate them. Be in the attitude of gratitude as much when you're feeling down as when you're feeling up. And when we can get there, I think we've achieved a great deal when we recognize that each is important and each is contributing to our well-being. The heartbeat pumps the blood out, then it flows back through the veins, out through the arteries, back through the veins. It's a rhythm. Allow the rhythms of life. Allow the natural flow of life to take us where we are going, to that time of celebration when we finally throw the monkey off our back and we become free because we've been willing to tell the truth and to experience life in all of its fullness, ups and downs. Thank you for listening and may you have a wonderful day. Namaste.